If you are currently in x-ray school and you are going to be starting clinical shortly or you're already in clinicals, then here are 10 things that you need to know in order to be successful throughout your clinical rotation. When I started my first day of clinicals, I felt extremely unprepared. I felt like the expectation was that I could go in and start performing x-rays even though I've only been in school for two months and I really had no idea what I was doing. Now that I've been a tech for about five years, I just want you to know that we expect little to nothing from you, especially on the first day. If you show up on time and you are prepared, you have everything that you need for your first day and you are willing to shadow and learn, then that is all you need on day one. It's not until a little bit further into the program where we start having some expectations of exams that you can perform and earning your checkoffs and such. So here are 10 things in no particular order that can help you succeed even from day one. Number one, time is experience. Whenever you are at the clinical site, please use your time wisely. That is, when you go on lunch break and you have a 30 minute lunch break, stay to that 30 minutes. Don't take advantage of maybe they're not gonna say anything after 45 minutes or you're disappearing for an hour or you want to go play on your phone in the bathroom for some extended period of time. You are there to learn and gain experience. As techs, we are aware of when you're there and when you're not. So even if you think that you're just disappearing or we think that you're restocking something, um, we know that you're trying to avoid some sort of exam or you're just trying to goof off somewhere else. But time is experience. We can't go disappear, uh, so you can't. Number two is to try challenging exams. I know that some people take a while to be comfortable with head work, so orbits or skulls. Some people shy away from spine exams, whether it's those flexion extensions or oblique views uh, for the L spine or C spine, or even just doing a basic T spine that involves the swimmers. And that can be a very challenging exam for some people. But if you are shying away from those exams now, then you won't be able to do them appropriately and properly once you're an actual tech and you don't have the option to shy away from those exams. As a student, this is the time where you can make some mistakes and have some grace with that. And this is also a time to learn from techs who have been doing it for a while and may be able to show you some tricks or be able to critique you in order to improve how you perform these exams for better images for the patient and quality diagnostic images for the physicians. Number three is to take constructive criticism. If somebody is trying to give you advice or trying to alter the way that you're doing something, they're coming from a good place. In the beginning of your clinical experience, we will be criticizing a lot of what you do. Don't let that scare you from performing exams with certain techs because you will need correction. Nobody's perfect, especially when you're starting out. As you progress into your second year and you're preparing to graduate, this is where your constructive criticism still needs to be absorbed because you still do not have the amount of experience that those around you have who are actually working as techs. And I think that students get complacent once they enter into their second year. They feel confident in their abilities to position patients, which they should feel confident at that point. However, there are still tricks and different things that you can do and that you can improve on. So keep taking that constructive criticism and you can fine tune all of your techniques. Number four is to take notes and review them. It can be pretty frustrating as techs to have to repeat ourselves to students whenever we're giving instructions. And as you're a first year, this isn't such a big deal because we know that we will have to repeat ourselves. But if you're still not getting it, then you need to write it down and 
make a mental note that okay this is the angle that I put on a foot or oh this is how I need to position for an L spine if we have to keep repeating these basic things then we will get pretty frustrated so keep a small notebook that you can keep in the pocket of your scrubs in order to just whip out, write a quick note down, and then put it back in your pocket and move on. We are not going to judge you for referring back to that notebook at any point in time. We really appreciate the effort that you're putting forward to remember what we're telling you. Because if we feel like we're being ignored and our instructions are not being well received, then we might stop trying to help you. Number five is to work with a variety of texts. It is so common that a student will stick themselves to one tech that they like and they will continue to work with them as much as possible throughout their whole clinical experience. It's great when you can bond with a tech and that tech can take you under their wing. However, you're really missing out on the opportunity to see a variety of ways to perform exams and a variety of ways to speak to patients and encounter that patient care aspect of our job. As a student, you have the ability to pick and choose what things you like from each tech and really adapt it into how you start to perform as a tech. So you're really harming yourself by not working with everybody in the department, even if you don't like them. Number six is to write down the comps that you need in a common area where us techs are able to visualize it. So if you haven't started clinicals yet, if you don't know what I'm talking about, there are comps that you need for each semester. So it starts out as, okay, you need to complete a chest x-ray and a hand x-ray. And that tech kind of writes down a grade and puts it in the computer as to how well you did, and then that gets sent to the school. You keep track of all of these because it then gets sent to the ARRT in order to receive your eligibility to sit for your boards. We will not remember what you need, so if you could write it down so that all of us can see it and see that, oh, I have a portable hand that we're about to go do, you need that as a checkoff, so let's go do it. This gets more and more important as you progress through schooling and the checkoffs that you need kind of get more difficult to obtain, such as those orbit x-rays or skull x-rays, kind of head work in general is fading away from x-ray because we have CT as a modality that is often used now. So if that is on our radar that we can visually see, then we're more likely to help you out. Number seven is to never decline an exam. I don't care that it is your seventh portable chest x-ray in a row. Congratulations, you entered into the field of radiology where every emergency room patient gets a chest x-ray. I'm in pediatrics now, so we don't do as many portable chest x-rays as the adult facilities do, but I remember very specifically a student that I was with at my clinical site going through school and she complained about how many chest x-rays she was doing. That's our job. You, the order comes in from the provider and then we go do the x-ray. If you are uncomfortable with an exam, say it's a spine that you're unfamiliar with or head work that you haven't covered in class yet, then you can say, oh, I can absolutely get that patient for you or I can set up the room or I would love to see how you perform that exam. And that way you're still in the exam and you're working with the tech and gaining that experience because time is experience. Number eight is to ask why. I love asking, why did you do it that way? What is the purpose of you doing that? And what is this used for? These are all great questions in any scenario where you have the opportunity to gain more information from a tech. Even if the tech is annoyed by having to explain why to you, it will improve your understanding of the exam or of what they're doing. And then you're likely to remember and do well and maybe integrate that into how you perform your exams in the future. Number nine is to treat every day as if it's an interview. 
you may or may not want to work at your clinical site once you graduate and the impression that you're making now is going to affect the likelihood of them hiring you in the future. Keep your conversations professional. I know that over the course of your two years in school, there are friends that you may make in clinicals or other students that you are speaking to in front of the text, and you may want to talk about what you did in the weekend that may or may not be workplace appropriate, or you might be really frustrated with a certain instructor who gave you a bad grade because you didn't study, or things, conversations may happen that aren't necessarily appropriate for all ears to hear. Within those conversations, you may feel comfortable enough to bring out your sailor self and maybe uh, speak some inappropriate language and that is not okay whether you're around a patient or not. So as a student, just try to avoid bad language. Mm -hmm. Along with us hearing you, we can smell you and we can see you. So please don't wear like excessive perfumes or lotions in a hospital setting. Really that's not appropriate because of certain allergens and sensitivities that patients have for uh, scented items like that. Along with being too fragranced in a good way is being fragranced in a bad way. And we wanna make sure that we are bathing and washing our hair and putting on deodorant and wearing clean socks. And if you need help with any of those things, then please discuss some resource opportunities that the school may have for you. And finally, number 10 is to keep improving you are not the best that you can be ever. On the first day when you go get a patient and you're not even sure what to say to them, you stumble on asking for their birthday and you forgot to do the oblique hand, all of that is going to change over time and you will be confident in your abilities to position patients. As you're working on your positioning skills, and you're improving with your patient care aspect of things, making sure that the patient is being treated as a human and not just an object, then you can work on your technique. And I'm a stickler for technique and watching your technique and making adjustments to your technique based on the patient's body habitus. Even now in my career, I can always make improvements just because you are a second year and you're ready to graduate doesn't mean that you know everything and it doesn't mean that you are fully prepared and equipped to become an x-ray tech. I'm not saying that you're not good at performing your job. I'm just saying that everyone can make improvements and it's good to be humble and to be open to learning and really focused on where your shortcomings are so that you can improve those. I hope that these 10 tips will help you become successful as a student throughout your clinical rotations. Good luck to each of you as you continue through your schooling. I hope that you're having fun as well as studying hard and I hope to see you guys in the next one. Bye!